So I'd like to talk to you about dealing with stress and looking after your well-being as well as the well-being of those around you. First things first, well done all of you. A huge congratulations on becoming doctors. Um, you've all done really, really well. So the world is pretty crackers right now. You're, you've graduated, sort of, and you're starting work earlier than usual. Everything's sort of gone to pot and this isn't the summer you expected. But don't let that detract from your fantastic achievement. And this talk, these inductions today are hopefully going to show you that actually this period is going to be really useful for you and you'll be so set up for being excellent F1s come August. You will always be the butt of the joke though that you will be the year that never pass finals. So when it comes to health and well-being, food is very important. So here is a list of all the different independent restaurants doing deliveries and takeaways at the moment. And here is a list of all the freebies and offers that NHS staff are getting at the moment. Um, so I would take advantage of all of those. FY1 can be stressful at times, but there are a lot of things that you might be worrying about now that actually, um, I'd like to just comfort you slightly, aren't the be all and end all. First of all, the concept of being a good FY1. You do not need to be the most competent FY1 ever. You do not need to answer all your consultants' questions. You just need to be safe, and that is what's important for an FY1. You need to be good at the basics. People are worried about generally feeling incompetent. Don't worry, we all feel incompetent most of the time. And think about it, your registrars and consultants will have already been practicing doctors before you were even born. You are starting as an F1, they are supposed to be more experienced, they are supposed to support you. You are meant to feel incompetent sometimes, so don't let that worry you. Mm. Botching clinical skills, I love botching clinical skills. We all do it all the time and it doesn't matter. You will upskill massively over the course of FY1, over the course of your first few weeks you will. Take extra needles, take extra ABG needles, um, and try your hardest, but there will always be support if you really can't do a skill, but do not worry, you are not a bad doctor if you have to stab a patient several times. Grumpy surgeons, they're actually not as grumpy as you think they're going to be. I hate surgery with a passion, but actually I like my surgical job the most out of all my jobs, and they were the consultants that were friendliest and most approachable, so don't worry too much about that. In terms of early mornings, apparently they get easier. I'm yet to see this, but keep trying and hopefully an 8am start won't be so terrible in the near future. Lots of people seem to be quite anxious about crash calls and attending crash calls. So I think during this induction period, you won't be carrying the crash bleep. Your F1 buddy might be, and I'd say go with them to the crash call for your learning. When you go is either at the moment or when you're holding the crash bleep, your job there is to do what you are trained to do as a medical student in an F1. Just go and give good quality chest compressions. They do not expect you to do anything fancy and they do not expect you to lead that crash call. You are there for your learning. It will be registrars and anaesthetists who lead it. So just do what you feel able to do at your level. In terms of nights and on-calls, that can be quite anxiety provoking if you're starting your job on that. Luckily, during this interim period, you'll mainly be doing normal um, normal office hours so that by the time you come to August and you do have a set of nights you'll be a well-oiled machine so don't worry about that for the moment. However mindful you are, however much yoga you do, you, there will be stressful points during your F1 at work and at home it is inevitable but there are several things you can do at work to help look after yourself. When you're going home give a good handover by the nature of the job, it is shift work, which is actually really positive for mental health, I think. It means that when you leave at five o'clock, somebody else is in charge and you do not need to worry about that patient. They are someone else's responsibility who is as competent, if not more than you. So they are in safe hands as long as you explain all your handover well before leaving for the day. Try your best to leave on time. You will all be very conscientious, very overachieving people but you are, it is a shift job and so leave on time. You need that evening time to look after yourself, to relax and to reboot ready for the next day. Staying late doesn't really help anybody, least of all you. In terms of your lunch break, make sure you take one. We had the phrase, eat before treat. No one likes a hangry doctor. Make sure you get away from your doctor's office or your ward and go somewhere sociable for your break.
Debriefing is really important. I think as medics, we're very good at debriefing after a crash call and debriefing after a death. But there are lots of potentially traumatic things you'll be seeing, upsetting things you'll be seeing, or difficult situations. Take the time to debrief. Your seniors should do it and they should lead it. But if they're not, just say, I need to discuss this. I need to go through this. It will help with your learning and it will help with your peace of mind as well. And lastly, talk about your mistakes talk about things with colleagues. Whatever mistake you've made, I can guarantee your friends will have made the same mistake. And it is wonderfully therapeutic to talk about it. Um, so it will help the way, with the way you're feeling and it will also help you learn from your mistakes. So just be open and honest in a safe environment with your friends and colleagues. There are lots of things about being an F1 that can actually really help your mental health. Having a salary. This is the first time you'll have been earning this amount of money. So just think about all the fun things when we're not in lockdown that you can do with that or all the online shopping you can do with it now. You'll be given a rota either for this interim period or for your main F1 jobs so you know exactly what shifts you'll be working for the next four months. And if you're an organisational freak, that's perfect so you can plan all your um, leave, all your evening activities and you know exactly when you can be having fun to book things in. So that's actually great for planning ahead. Mess socials. Rachel will talk to you more about the mess. She was our mess president in F1. They're a great way to meet people coming from other med schools into the trust. Um, I'm a very antisocial person, but I absolutely loved our mess socials, and they are a really good way to make new friends within the trust. Also, hobbies. Lots of people worry that when they start F1, they're going to have to give up all their friends, family, relationships, hobbies. That is a big fat lie. You've got lots of time off. You have lots of weekends free, even on A&E and surgical rotors. You have a lot of evenings off, so you can keep up whatever hobbies or sports or arts activities that you do. And I really would encourage you to keep them up so you've got something to look forward to um, outside of work. So we can't really give a talk without talking about coronavirus. Obviously, life is different at the moment and work is different at the moment and that will pose stresses. There is a lot of support out there. The Trust has so much help on offer, you just need to know where to access it. These links, these top two links, will direct you to whatever you need. Um, so look at them. You might not need this help now, but you might need it in a few months. You might need it when you've had a bad day at work. So just look at them and know where to access help. The Facebook page is constantly being updated with different yoga sessions, different counselling sessions. You name it, it's on there. So just please look at it so you know where to find help when you need it. It is Ramadan at the moment. Um, if you need any extra advice or support about this, you can speak to your supervisor or follow this link. There are places to pray and a lot of doctors will be observing Ramadan. Um, so if you, need, if you have any questions about that, just please ask. The Trust has invested an awful lot in psychology, which is fantastic. So every department has its named psychologist. You can access up to six sessions of psychology for free and with a very, very short wait, which is a wonderful uh, resource. So if you feel you need it for whatever reason you need to talk through with a counsellor, psychologist, please access that. That's a completely invaluable resource. Um, so just follow those links or email, email the teams to access that. Um, and this final slide is just showing more numbers that you can either text or call for any advice about getting support and a link to some of the apps that are free at the moment like Headspace um, if you just need um, a bit of peace.